So I will try to this. So maybe <clears throat> you hear, right? So here I'm going to talk first about the five stages, but before I'm going to talk about my favorite topic, which is me. So can you guess where this lab is? So this is a Japanese lab. This is where I studied robotics um, in Japan. And that's how a Japanese robotics lab looks like. And this is uh, colleagues working late until 10 o'clock at night. That's, that's how hard they work. Um, <clears throat> Uh, when I when I was a student, I, I was employed here at Yamagata University. And um, which unfortunately was uh, close to this uh, nuclear accident in uh, Fukushima in 2011. Uh, after this accident happened, I, I moved to to here, can you guess what is this? This is the my university, UAE University in Alain, Abu Dhabi. Uh, so I've been teaching here since 2011. Um, uh, here I lead a robotics lab. We do UX research, robotics research, uh, analytics, and also uh, data visualization uh, research. Um, recently, we're also helping astronauts uh, to improve their spacesuits. Right. Um, when I arrived at UA University in 2011, uh, the university asked me to develop a, an innovative course. Uh, so I proposed to do a course on design thinking. The problem was that we didn't have any good textbook about it and actually it was not very good textbooks so we decided me and my students to co-create <clears throat> using design thinking to co-create the textbook which we published for free in the ibooks and after that of course i went to facebook and i wrote on my wall i just published a book with my students and what happened afterwards was unbelievable. So can you guess where is this picture from? So this is a picture of Mexico City. So a few weeks after this, uh, I got a call from uh, Mexico MBA school and they asked me if I could come for the summer to teach design thinking in Mexico. So that was uh, very interesting. And then friends in Germany. This is uh, Bielefeld University in Germany. Uh, they asked me the same. And this, can you recognize this one? So this is the old Apple headquarters in uh, Cupertino, uh, where we were invited to give a few workshops about design thinking. So that year was really interesting. It was the year when design thinking was really picking up. <laughs> Right. The next thing I like to explain very quickly is that design thinking has uh, many flavors. Uh, so here are a few flavors. So all these words, Lean UX, Design for Life, Lean Start, all these are design thinking flavors and they share a lot of the principles that we mentioned before. Uh, for example, if your organization would like to design an application, uh, the flavor you like to use would be the Google Sprint method or the Lean UX method or the Lean Startup. If you are wondering what to do with your life and your career, well, then <clears throat> the next, uh, the, the flavor you like to use about design thinking is the one called Design for Life, which is actually a subject taught at Stanford University. Um, if you like to design an experience rather than a product, then you'd like to use service design. And then we have another keyword here, it's called human-centered design. This is another word for design thinking when you'd like to separate yourself from idea a little bit, right? So 
a different application, different flavor of design thinking. So it's important to know what, what's the purpose you're pursuing. Um, as I mentioned before, we do a lot of analytics and data visualization. So I'm going to show you a bit, a bit of data visualization about design thinking. And here you can see a chart. Um, in red, you can see the trends, the popularity search for service design. In blue, you can see the popularity of the keyword design thinking according to Google. So you can you can see that it really took off in 2011 and it, the popularity has been growing unstoppably. Right? It's very interesting. Here's another <clears throat> slide I'd like to show you. So here is the comparison between service design and design thinking and human-centered design. So you can see, depending on the country we are, uh, people refer to this process with a different name. So in, in US and Russia a, and the UK, uh, actually service design is a more popular keyword than design thinking. <clears throat> and then you can see, can you guess where human-centered design is popular? So you can see, this is Japan, it's an exception. Um, in Japan, people prefer to talk about human-centered design. And I, I'm guessing um, the reason is that pronouncing service design in Japanese or design thing is quite a challenge for Japanese people. Right, uh, <clears throat> so that's the, the previous slide that we saw. And however, however, the interesting thing about uh, service design and design thinking um, is that it shares a lot of uh, common points with another very famous and popular trend uh, process called Agile Scrum that you probably know it, it's a process to develop software. And if you can see, it just dwarfs design thinking, though it's very, very, it shares like about 50% of the ideas and principles, like rapid iteration, flexibility, and so on. And, and you can see that with the companies that teach design thinking, um, many of colleagues that uh, work at consulting companies that teach design thinking, uh, <clears throat> they recently tell me, well, yeah, we, we still teach design thinking, but what brings the the, the money in is agile, teaching agile, which is very similar, right? So that's, that's another thing. And if you ask any agile practitioner and you ask them what are the principles of agile, I, you can see that, wow, there's a 50% overlap with, with design, design thinking. Here you can see the slide for, for agile. Right, um, next one is, so what is the simplified method of design thinking? So the first one is research. A typical typical misconception I find uh, is from my students is that they think that design thinking is about brainstorming and post-its on the wall. And I always tell them, no, if you want to do a good design thinking workshop, it's all about the preparation previous to the workshop. This means the research, and this means spending two weeks full time learning about the topic. I, I, it makes me very sad when I see a design thinking workshop where people just jump into a brainstorming without having researched the topic deeply. Uh, it's, it's absolutely crazy, I think, and a waste of time. Um, so that's one, one of the things we want to keep in mind. Um, the second, the second, um, the second phase is sharing. So usually in a design thinking workshop, we would send this, we would gather a team of five and we would send them to research different parts of the problem, stakeholders, interview different stakeholders of the problem. Then they would come back for the workshop face to face and they would share all their findings or what they would debrief all their findings to the rest of the team. 
um, this would be done in a in a whiteboard or recently when we do things online we could use middle or any other uh, uh, software right my clicker just reset and i don't know if it's working or not but can somebody um maybe go to slide number 23 when when is that possible because i don't have any feedback of the slides we are in oh it's, it's fun hello 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 no. right the third one is the brainstorm and this is the phase where people write on post-its the crazy ideas they had after receiving all the knowledge that has been shared on the on the whiteboard um, the fourth one phase is what we call the billing phase this is the most important phase this is where people look at each other's ideas and try to steal each other's ideas and improve their own ideas or build on other people's ideas this is what we call remixing ideas the fifth phase is about prototyping creating a small prototype but let's not talk about it let's show it so here you have a a group of students from dartmouth engineering and if i ask you what phase do you think is this one i would say it's number two so the students went outside they took pictures they researched the topics and they came back they posted the pictures on the white whiteboard and here you have some post-its and what ha what's happening here it's very interesting is it's a remixing of ideas it's happening people are looking and learning and looking at the post-its at proposed ideas and then trying to kind of improve on each other's ideas to see if they they come to a better solution to compared to what they have at the moment so that's that's very interesting right this is uh, david kelly and this is a screenshot from the book and there's two places where usually people learn design thinking one is in stanford where ideo is located nearby and so this is actually the second floor of the D school so you can get a feeling of how it looked like and this is the hall of of the D school at stanford uh, it's very interesting that you can get a self self-guided uh, tour here the other place you can learn design thinking is near berlin in potsdam where the same sponsor of the design school created a sister school called the Hasso Platner Institute at Potsdam. And this is how it looks like, quite similar. And another thing I like to talk about is the functions and roles in a design thinking team. So usually you would have um, the facilitator, which is this person standing up. This is Peter Skillman, a famous IDEO employee that went on to design the Spaghetti Tower Challenge and that was popularized by Tom Wujek and afterwards went to work for Nokia as an interaction designer. Then you have here on the left side uh, the brother of David Kelly, who here is having the role of backup man. The backup man is like the coach that watches the game, doesn't say nothing, and then gives notes, notes to the facilitator. And the rest of the people sitting, these are called experts, and the thing we want in design thinking is to have as diverse as possible experts uh, so here you have a biologist mba students uh, anthropologist and so on and david kelly says the hard part about design thinking is to find people that think very differently from different backgrounds but but that can work together without killing each other that's that's the challenge of design thinking this is a picture uh, of a workshop at apple uh, so here's some Apple employees were designing some toasters and so that would be the prototyping phase this is if you can guess 
this is at your university in this design thinking class and this is a prototype can you guess it's a microwave oven and i love this prototype because it has an ear it's this gray thing in the middle in the top left corner and signifying that hey you can talk to me i am a voice activated microwave this is a debriefing phase two for example of a workshop about obesity how to reduce obesity so the, i love this workshop because the students always have the misconception that obesity is about lack of sport and that's not true the obesity is about uh, a natural amount of sugar in the diet that we're not aware of and here you have different sugar content for items that we don't think that they would contain much sugar right so the human body is not not designed to take 10 percent of sugar and and so here's also phase two a debriefing at the university by students where each of the students took a role went out to research different stakeholders and came back and posted everything on the wall to debrief the team and here's for example the prototype on this obesity workshop where one of the teams proposed to uh, uh, open a rehab center where obese people could kind of go and, and, and get coaching on, on how to do it. Uh, so thank you very much.